So you saw that each charge produces a potential everywhere around. So if you look at one charge Q1, the potential it produces here is K Q1 by R1. And if you look at another charge somewhere here, that is going to produce a potential. It is not an arrow. It is a number. So therefore, it just simply adds K Q2 by R2. In fact, the reason we study potential, it has its disadvantage. No? Think about it. It is not giving us the full energy. And it, we have to keep all these charges at rest. If I bought one charge, the numbers here will all change. So if I try to look at one charge, if I bring two charges, then I have to really think about it. It becomes a complicated mess. Why will we spend so much effort on this? Because it is a scalar quantity. Electric field is a vector quantity. It is a mess to add it up. Whereas with potential, you just simply add one by one. Potential here because of this. Potential there because of this, because of that. If you have 20 charges, 20 terms, you just simply find them, add them. Numerically, do not worry about direction. And that is such a huge advantage that we will spend quite a lot of time studying potential. Okay. With electric fields, they are real quantities. We do want them. It turns out that electric field is a messy quantity at some level. Too many vectors. But we want them ultimately. So what do we do? Turns out that you calculate this one and using V, we can find out E. So first, in fact, the biggest thing that people do in electrostatics is to first find potential, then use potential to find electric field. Why will you do that? Because electric potential is an extremely easy thing to find. It is easier than potential energy. If you have 10 objects, 10 charges, how many terms do you need for potential energy of the system? 10 C2, which is how much? 45 terms. How many terms do you need to calculate potential somewhere? You need 10. 10. Because each of them will contribute one number. And how many vector resolutions do you need to calculate potential? Nothing. Just simply add it up. Okay. This is not our vector. It is our distance. Number, number, number. Very easy in terms of calculation. Okay. This is one of the main reasons we focus on potential. But if it turns out that it was a useless quantity and it is easy to calculate, nobody will do it. I mean, why should we calculate useless things? It is easy, but it is useless. So it turns out this is easy and quite useful. One immediate use is that you can use this to find electric field. We will learn how to do that. You differentiate potential and you will get electric field. Okay, so we will learn how to do that. But that is not the only use. Potential by itself turns out to be useful. Like when you look at electric circuits, you talk about 220 volt. You do not talk about 220 newtons per coulomb. Okay. One, because it is easy. It is related to energy. So from here you can get to energy. And so many things become useful if we can calculate potential. Okay. So though it has certain conditions, constraints, charges must be static, this should not move, this gives me a number. If there is one charge that comes here, we know its energy. What if two charges come here, then we do not know their energy because there will also be an interaction energy between them. With all of those constraints, this is still important to calculate. Okay? In fact, probably it is even more important than electric field. They are equally important. I should not say it is even more important. But generally, this is the thing that you will be doing most of the time, partly because it is easy. Okay? So the potential here, because of Q1, KQ1 by R1, because of Q2, KQ2 by R2, because of Q3, KQ3 by R3, but Q3 can be negative. So if Q3 is negative, this will be a negative number. But I will still write it as KQ3 by R3. R3 is always a positive number because this is just a distance. It is not a vector. Okay. Whereas the Q can be negative. In fact, you can write this as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Take the K out, which is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Q1 by R1 plus Q2 by R2 plus Q3 by R3, etc., etc., etc. So for every charge. And by the way, this becomes very nice and simple when you need to convert it into an integral. 
because that will just become d q by r. So, you can cut it up into tiny, tiny pieces. It is just integral d q by r. We will worry about that when we get there, but I hope the basic idea is clear. The potential due to one single point charge is k q by r as we have already seen. So, if I had single point charge, what is the potential here? It is k q by r and it adds up. If I had 10 of these charges, each one will produce its potential and it adds up. So, it is like superposition, but it is not a vector superposition, it is just numbers that you superpose. Okay. Energy does not superpose because if you bring one charge in, it adds lots of extra stuff and when you bring the next charge in, you will have to worry about this and that together. So, first of all to superpose, you must add one charge, you must only add so many numbers, whereas here you will add you add many more, no, NC2 is not going to be a superposable quantity. Electric field is superposed because for that charge, this vector, this vector, but it is vector superposition. This is almost like scalar superposition. So, this is the easiest of the lot. Okay.